Jennifer Price is a practicing nurse and a busy mom of two girls. I really like to work out. I like to lift weights, um, spend time with my family, with my girls, hang out with my friends. When she noticed a change in one of her breasts, the 36-year-old simply added calling the doctor to her to-do list. I just noticed that my areolar area on my one breast was a little bit lighter than the other one. Put it off for a little bit, of course, like we all do, because we're busy, we're moms, we're a million things going on. A few months later, Jennifer called her OBGYN for an appointment. When she looked at them, she said, it's normal changes, but for your age, it's not. So I'd like to do more to kind of see what's going on. So she ordered a mammogram. And that led to more tests. So did the mammogram. They ended up having to do more images. So I knew, as a nurse, like I knew something was seen. So they did more images. Um, they told me then right away there was a mass. So we're going to do an ultrasound. So they were able to do that at that same appointment. Um, with in, I don't know, a minute of that, he said there's multiple masses in there, so we'll have to do a biopsy. We uh, got staging studies, which included CT scans and bone scan, and we found that she had evidence of cancer spread to her bones, and so we diagnosed her as a stage four breast cancer. The first thing that comes to your mind, like, I don't wanna die, I don't wanna lose my hair, I don't wanna lose my breast. How do I have cancer? Like. Just, you know, why me, why me? She told her girls the news. My kids are what pulled me through because I couldn't lay in bed and cry and not do anything. So my life went on very quickly. So I kind of accepted it and it was kind of like, okay, what do I need to do? You know, you put your head down and you just kind of go. And I just listened to what my doctors told me to do, what I needed to do. A multidisciplinary team of Penn State Health doctors discussed her case and recommended chemotherapy. That's how we started her treatment with those infusions uh, of these four chemotherapy um, every three weeks. When I was probably two therapies in, I started losing my hair. But I decided to try to, again, involve my girls and make it as fun for them as it could be, because I was going to be devastated regardless. But I wanted to make it a good experience for them. Jennifer let them dye her hair and help cut it. I'm sitting in the chair, like, bawling my eyes out, but they had a blast. And they even talk about, like, how fun it was when they got to, like, color mommy's hair. Surgery was next. Doctors recommended a hysterectomy. Our ovaries put out hormones, um, and those hormones can feed the cancer. Uh, Jennifer is young and premenopausal, so her, horm her ovaries are active, and so one of the ways of um, improving her outcome is to remove the ovaries um, and she uh, elected to have a total hysterectomy which removed the ovaries as well as her uterus. After healing from that surgery, the next step was a bilateral mastectomy. So her surgery went extremely well. The operation took about six hours to do a uh, combination of myself and Dr. Johnson, the plastic surgeon, uh, who put in what we call expanders, which uh, allow them to uh, stretch the skin and then eventually put in implants. Follow-up scans look promising. In the next subsequent couple scans, we almost could not tell where the cancer was, or we could tell that it was there and is treated now, which is the best news possible. Jennifer thanks family and friends for their constant support and also joins her healthcare team in spreading awareness. I would say to, to do the self-breast exams and if anything looks abnormal, it's better to be cautious and get it checked out and it be nothing than it be like I was, kind of like thrown into this like awful situation. This is where being aware of your body and uh, doing those self-breast exams, you know yourself the best. And if there is any change, um, you want to be the first one to notice that change and make sure to get in touch with your physician. We call it breast awareness. So we ask women to be aware of what their breasts are like normally and if they see or feel changes, then to report them to their physician. Jennifer continues immunotherapy, but also has added more fun things on her to-do list, including a recent trip to Disney World and simply enjoying life. The positive of living with breast cancer, I guess, is that, that it's definitely made me live, actually live more than just kind of go through the motions of life. Jennifer continues to receive scans every three months, and she just crossed off being on TV from her bucket list. Back to you, Deborah. Thanks, Denise. Joining us is Dr. Dalila Dodge, breast cancer surgeon at Penn State Health Breast Center and Jennifer's surgeon. Thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure. What an amazing story. How is Jennifer doing? 
I think you've just seen she's doing remarkably well. We can really say that right now she doesn't have anything that looks like active disease. She's in complete remission. Her energy level is amazing. She's back to work. She's back to all of her activities. She's really living.